Hello everyone and welcome. So in today's video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to transform your primary menu bar and your secondary menu bar. When you first install Divi, you get this layout. So this is standard. So if you don't customize this, you're just going to make your website look like just any other Divi website out there. So we are going to transform it and make it look like this. So as you can see, our main image here has been blended into our header area. We're going to change the, uh, the colors over here to make them match the colors on our website. And also we are going to change this logo because this is the default logo that comes with Divi. So on the top there, we're also going to add a secondary menu bar, which will again customize your site. And then we're going to add some CSS code to make sure that this is aligned all the way to the right, because by default, it is aligned to the left. This tutorial has been made possible by DiviCake.com. Check out their huge selection of Divi themes, layouts, and plugins. The link to that is in the show notes below. And also, if you're uh, brand new to Divi, I have a course which you can uh, sign up for. The link for that is in the, in, is in the comments box below. This course will teach you how to build awesome professional looking websites. And also, if you haven't bought Divi yet, you might as well buy Divi because I am giving away my course if you buy Divi using my affiliate link. All that information is in the show notes below. So without wasting a lot of time, let's get started and let's design our primary menu bar. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you're logged into your WordPress admin dashboard. So right now I am. So I'm going to come over here to dashboard and then I'm going to come all the way here to Divi and then click on theme customizer. So this is where all the settings that we need are located. Okay, so first of all, what you want to do is to come over here to header and navigation, click on primary menu bar, and this is where you can start making your customization. Okay, so in here, the first thing you want to do is to change the font. So you want to make sure that your font is in line with the fonts that you're using on your website. So in my case, uh, I'm going to search for my font here. Okay, and it's right here, Monsterat. Right, so that's my font for my primary menu bar. So the next thing I'm going to do is to adjust my text size. So right now it seems uh, quite big. So I'm just going to reduce this to about 17. And then the next thing I'm going to do here is to increase the letter spacing. This just makes it much easier and slick. Okay, so over here I'm going to make sure that my font style is set to bold. Okay, so that's looking great already. I like that. And then over here you want to change your text colors. But here's the thing, if you change your text colors first before the image is blended in, you may not um, choose the right color that works with this. So what you want to do is to come over here to our background, select it, and then you want to drag this transparency all the way down. So you can see here as I'm dragging it, my image is slowly blending into my primary menu bar. And then if you bring it all the way down, this blend takes over and now we have a seamless navigation on the top here. Now it's time to change our text colors. So I'm going to come over here to my text color. I'm going to change this. So I think that works with our website. But of course, you want to make sure that you choose colors that are from your color palette. So this works for, uh, for my case. And then I want to make sure there's a distinction between my uh, active link color and my just no my normal uh, link colors. So I'm going to come over here to active link color. So you can either choose white just, just to make it uh, clear which page you've selected. So I think I'll go with that because that really stands out. Okay, so that's looking great. And what you may also want to do is to come over here to the background color and do the same. So this is the uh, secondary color. So this is already transparent, which is good. So you can see here when I uh, add my mouse over to our team, the background here is transparent. Okay, so that's what we want. So that's looking great. Now over here, our drop down menu line color, you can see here the color is out of, um, out of line because it's not a color that works with what we have at the moment. So what you want to do here is to make sure you choose a color that's within your color palette. So let's go ahead and change that. So I'm just going to click over here and uh, I'm going to try this yellow and see how it looks. It's a bit too bright. So I'm just going to reduce it a little bit. So I think that works fine. So that's perfect. 
I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that as it is. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead now and click on publish. Now you can see here that our logo, for our logo to work, it needs to be a logo that is white or a very um, bright color because we have a dark background. So in order for you to do that, you need to use a program like Photoshop or Illustrator. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna to go to Photoshop and show you how to quickly create an image which has a transparent background because ideally that's what you need here. So let's switch over to Photoshop. Right, so I'm here in Photoshop, so I'm gonna come over here to File, New. So our logo doesn't have to be massive, so I'm just gonna choose a size between, let's say, uh, 300 width and 100 height. I'm gonna click on Create, and then I'm just gonna zoom in by pressing Command Plus, like that. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to add our text, so I'm gonna click my Text tool here, and then we're gonna add our name, or let's call this A1 Studio. Right, right now we can't see what you're typing in, that's because our text here is set to white, so that's fine. All I need to do now is to change my background color. So to do that, I'm gonna add this new layer, drag it below the, the text, and then I'm gonna fill that background with a color. Now it doesn't matter what color you, you use at the moment because when we export this, it's going to be transparent anyways. So I'm just gonna adjust now my size. So I'm gonna go back into my text here, select all of it, and then I'm just gonna reduce the size until I'm happy. And then I'm just gonna center it like that. So now it's time to get rid of our main background, which is locked. So I'm gonna drag this lock into the bin like that. And then I can go ahead and delete it by just dragging it again into this bin. Right, so over here, we have a color on this. So what we wanna do is to make sure we add a layer which doesn't have a color. So I'm just gonna add a new layer here. And then I'm gonna drag this one here with the color in the bin. So what we have now is the text, which is the logo, and the background, which is transparent. So let's go ahead and export that. So I'm gonna export this. And over here, we can see here it looks white. That's because as a JPEG, it takes the background color. So what I'm gonna do here is to change my preset from JPEG to PNG 24, and now you can see we have transparency. So this is how you want to export all your images which have a transparent background. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead now and click on save. We're gonna give this a name. So let's call this A1 Studio. And then I'm just gonna save this to the desktop so I can find it easily. Right, so we're done with this stage. You might as well save this just in case you wanna come back and make some changes. So back over here to our website, I've just uh, clicked on publish. We're gonna close out of this and we're going to go ahead and upload our logo. So to upload our logo, we want to come over here to Divi, Theme Options, and then we can see here the first option here is the logo. Click on Upload, Upload Files, Select Files, and then we're going to come over here to the desktop, choose our logo, and then I'm going to click on Set as Logo. So now our logo has been uploaded onto our website. All we have to do now is to click on Save Changes. Okay, now that's saved, Let's go back to and customize our header area. So I'm gonna come back over here to customize. So now we can see our logo is now up there as A1 Studio. Fantastic, so if you wanna make a, a, a few customizations to that logo, maybe make it slightly bigger, all you gotta do is come over here to header and navigation, click on primary menu bar, and then we're going to increase the uh, logo max height. So you can see here as I'm dragging this to about 60, this has become bigger, okay? So that's exactly what we need. So that's fine, we're done with this now. Click on Publish. So the next thing is, maybe you wanna have a secondary, menu, a secondary uh, header area here. So let's go ahead and add that. In fact, before we do that, uh, one quick thing here, you may also want to uh, perhaps maybe make this full width. So if I select here, you can see now that uh, my primary menu has changed because we've actually dragged this logo all the way to the left and my menu all the way to the right. So this may be a design that you may wanna go with, but uh, I just wanted to show you that option. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring it back as it is. Right, so the next thing we're gonna work on now is the secondary menu bar. So click on header and navigation, 
So we want to first start by adding our header elements. So I'm going to click on header elements. So if you have uh, links to your social media, you can always uh, select uh, show social media icons. And you can also so show a search icon. So over here, I'm going to add my number, my phone number. Right, of course, this number doesn't work. So don't try and call it. Okay, so next, I'm going to add my email address. All right, so that's my email address. So I can click on publish. So you may notice that nothing is showing at the moment. Uh, so what I need to do now is to come back over here, click on a secondary menu bar, and this is where we can make our customizations. So for example, I can start off by adding my background color. But before I do that, I want to just open my site in a new tab so that uh, we can see these changes. Okay, so we can see now on the top that this is now our secondary menu bar. So let's customize this. So I'm going to come back over here. So for our background color, in fact, I'm going to refresh this. Okay, so now it's showing. So if it doesn't show, all you got to do is to refresh, and then this will now show. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my header and navigation and click on secondary menu bar. So this is where you can adjust the sizes. So if I increase the size like that, let's bring it up to about, say, 16, because that makes it much easier to read. So over here on the uh, font style, you can make it bold if you wanted to. So which I think is uh, quite nice. And then the letter spacing as well, because the text is quite small, I'm just going to add one to make it easier to read. Okay, so let's adjust the background color. So over here, I can go into the background color. So let's choose a dark color to distinguish uh, the two areas. So black could work. In fact, I can add a bit of transparency as well, so that it's not really uh, that dark. So you can see now that uh, that looks much better. So we don't have a drop down here, so we're going to leave it as it is. Now let's adjust the, uh, the text color. So I think that white is a bit too much. So what we can do is we can add some transparency to it like that so that the text is not really like in your face like that. So I think this will do. I'll leave it right there. Right, that looks good. Fantastic. So um, I'm pretty much happy with that. So the next thing I want to do is this information here is all the way over here to the left. Now, I would like this to be over here to the right. So to do that, we're going to add a bit of CSS. So first of all, I'm going to publish this. Right, so to customize this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the inspector. So I'm going to right click on this, click on inspect. Okay, so this is our inspector. So this is the class that we're looking at, id equals et hyphen info, okay? So over here to the right, we need to add our custom CSS. So, so I'm going to say float right. Okay, so you can see here, now that I've added a float right, this information here has been moved from the left all, over, all, uh, all the way here to the right. So all I have to do now is to copy this code like that and add it to my style sheet because this just shows you where things are as you're designing your page, but uh, the changes are not applied directly onto our website. So this tool is actually really uh, good because it allows you to find where the CSS is and then apply it to your style sheet. So now that I've copied this uh, information here, I'm going to go back over here to my site, click on secondary, back over here until I get additional CSS. And then I'm going to paste my CSS here into my style sheet. So you can see here, as soon as I've pasted it, now things have moved and now it's adjusted over here to the right just by adding this uh, CSS code. So this is how you add your custom CSS code if you want to make specific adjustments onto your site. So over here I can see there is, uh, the, the text is a bit too big. I'd like to go back and um, adjust that a little bit. So I'm going to click on Publish just to make sure that I have uh, all my information saved. We're going to go back again. Now, it is necessary as you're designing that you go back and make all these little tweaks because this is how you really hand code your website to make it look exactly how you want it. Right, so uh, back over here to header navigation. I'm going to click on Secondary menu bar. So I'm going to reduce this to about, say, 14. Okay, so that looks much better because we don't want this really to be like uh, in your face. So that's enough information for someone to uh, take.
take a look at the contact information. Okay, so now that all that is said, I'm just going to go back over here to my primary menu bar and increase my menu height. So I'm going to increase that to about, let's say, 76, maybe even 80. Right. The reason why I'm doing this is because right now this menu is way too close to the secondary menu bar. So I just want to give this some breathing space. And then, um, in fact, the logo, I, can, I might as well leave it as it is. Okay, so that's looking brilliant. Now I'm going to go ahead and publish. So as you can see here, by default, uh, these social media icons may uh, don't link anywhere. So what you want to do is to go in and make sure you add your links so that every time someone clicks on these social media icons, they are redirected to your pages. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm just going to close this for now. So you want to come over here to Divi, Theme Options. And then you want to scroll all the way down here. So here's the first one. So this is where you add your Twitter profile, Facebook profile URL, Google+, your RSS if you have one. So once you add them here and save, automatically when someone clicks on, your, on their website, this will take them to your social media pages. So you can see now that we have customized this page and we've made it look uh, way different. So this, by just looking at it, you can't tell if this is a uh, Divi uh, designed website. So this is how you customize your primary and secondary headers. As I mentioned, if you'd like to uh, learn how to design professional looking websites with Divi, I have a course which I'll link to in the show notes below. And the good news is if you haven't bought Divi yet, you can actually uh, get this course absolutely free by buying Divi through my affiliate link. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. And before I finish this video, I'd like to say today's tutorial is made possible by DiviCake. Dot com. Check out their huge selection of DV themes, layouts, and plugins. The link is in the description below. So keep an eye on this channel as I, uh, because I continuously produce videos. So uh, you want to make sure that you subscribe and click the bell notification so that you're notified every time I go online or I post a new video. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.